welcome back to Bentley House Kits. I'm Ara, and today I'm going to be telling you about our first ever room box kit. This is the fireplace room and it comes in both 112 scale and 124 scale. The 112 scale box is made out of cardboard and the 124 scale is made out of mat board. These materials have been chosen because of their low cost and low weight so that you can get some interesting quality room boxes for a cheaper price. This also keeps the weight of shipping down and all of the leftovers are recyclable once you're done. This video will help you construct both of these sizes. However, I will only be showing the construction of the 112th because it's a little bit more complicated to cover up the cardboard corrugation. However, all the pieces are the same exact letter and go in the same exact place. So whatever I do here, you would just do with the mat board pieces in 124 scale. Before you get started on either project, I want to give you a few tips and tricks for working with cardboard and any type of paper project. The less moisture, the better. Any type of glue that you use with this project, if it has a high moisture content, it does have the possibility to warp or bend your cardboard or mat board. I highly suggest working with a acetone based glue such as Fabrifix or hot glue. PVA glue should still work just fine if that's all you have. Just make sure you work in thin coats and use weights and things to keep the cardboard straight as it dries. Another thing you may notice as you're working on specifically the cardboard room box is that when you start to apply wallpaper, if you apply it straight to the cardboard, you may experience some dimpling. If you do find that that's happening, you can use poster board as something to apply the wallpaper to first and then apply the wallpaper and the poster board, which is glued together, to the wall of the cardboard. This will help to eliminate that problem. Be careful not to crush the cardboard. Once it's constructed, the room is pretty strong and can take quite a bit of weight to the different surfaces. But as you're working on it, some of the cardboard pieces can be rather thin. And if you're not being careful with them, you could accidentally crush the pieces. The cardboard room box comes with chipboard strips like this. They are cut out and then used to cover up the corrugation along the edge. This will also help strengthen those small cardboard pieces. The 124 scale kit made from mat board does not need the chipboard strips. This is only for the 112 scale cardboard room box. While I'm discussing the chipboard edges, I want to make note that you only need to use these on the exposed edges of the cardboard. I want to make that clear because if you start covering every single edge as you take it out of the individual sheets, your room may not end up fitting together. Only cover the edges once you've glued a piece on and you know that that edge will be visible once the entire room is constructed. The last thing I want to mention before we get started is replacement pieces. Specifically for the 112 scale cardboard room, it is very easy to create your own replacement pieces. If you keep the templates that all the pieces come out of, they are basically a free pattern and then you can use any type of cardboard you have around your house to make your own replacement piece. You can do the same with the mat board room box. If for some reason a piece gets messed up or you want to add additional pieces, you can use a couple layers of cereal box chipboard or if you happen to have chipboard laying around, a couple layers of that will equal the same thickness as the mat board that I use. Because of this, I highly suggest you keep all of your templates all the way through the end of the project so that you can quickly and easily cut a piece if you need it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to completely construct these rooms from start to finish, but I do suggest that you stop along the way to add wallpaper and details and finishes as you go along because it'll be a lot easier to do that before everything is completely 100% put together. So take your time and enjoy the room, and I hope you enjoy this video. When you first pull out your kit, this is what you should see. You should have three pages of chipboard strips. This is just half a page that I'm showing you here. You will have three total. You will have one acetate cut sheet that has paper backing, and you will have nine cardboard sheets. These should be in order from one to nine. In order to start removing your pieces, you are going to use a sharp craft blade and cut through the tabs that are holding the pieces in. Each time you remove a piece, you're going to want to run a bit of soft tissue or a cotton swab along the edges. 
This will remove any leftover laser ash. The first piece I'm removing is piece B from sheet 1. Next, I'm removing piece A out of sheet 6. I'm leaving the rest of the pieces in the sheets so I can find them easier later on. I'm going to put piece B on top of piece A, but line it up all the way against the back. I'm using hot glue for these first few steps, but then I switch over to Fabri-Tac or Fabri-Fix. I'm laying a line of hot glue all across the edge of the back of piece A and carefully pushing down piece B. If there's any sort of curve in piece A, this will help it lay down flat. I reinforce that with a little bit of hot glue. Now I'm removing two pieces marked C and two pieces marked D. If I want to have windows, I'm going to remove those inner pieces. If you want plain walls with no windows, leave those pieces intact and you can wallpaper over them later. I'm again making sure to clean those edges that are revealed once I remove the pieces. I'm now going to my acetate sheet and I'm going to cut out the matching shapes that go with my windows. You may have to remove the paper backing once you cut out the piece. These plastic pieces can be a little bit flimsy, so if you want something stronger, you can replace it with some toy packaging or some other type of clear material. To install it, I am going to put it in between the two pieces that have a matching letter. So in between the two D pieces and in between the two C pieces so that I have a window that is sandwiched in between the wall. I'm using Fabri-Tac or Fabri-Fix glue here in order to make sure that I have no warping. If you're using some kind of PVA or white glue, just make sure you put something heavy on it while it dries so that it doesn't warp during the drying process. Now that I have my windows sandwiched within the two walls, I'm going to show you how I use my chipboard strips to cover up the exposed edges. I'm going to take some scissors and cut along both sides and just cut out however many strips that I think I need to cover up the edges of the windows. I also am going to run a soft tissue along either edge here. Be careful of cardboard. Make sure you're protecting your fingers because cardboard cuts are no fun. They're like really like worse paper cuts. So just be careful and protect your fingers. Once those are all cleaned up and ready to go, I can carefully add glue to one side of the strip and then I'm going to put it into any of the areas where I know that the cardboard corrugation is going to be visible. I'm being very careful not to get it onto the acetate. If you want to do this before you put the acetate in, you can. I elected to do it afterwards. Now you can see it's covering up that corrugation and it's going to be much easier to finish this wall. You can wait to do the outside later. I wanted to make sure and do the inside of the wall because it'll be much easier to do it before the next step. The next step is simply going to be gluing the walls in place. I'm adding glue to the side front of piece B and on top of piece A. This is going to make an L shape where I can attach my wall and this will help support the back piece. I'm also going to be using a little bit of hot glue to reinforce this back line because that won't be seen. Now I'm going to be removing and cleaning piece E from sheet 5. Four pieces marked F from sheet 7. You will notice that these have engraved lines on them. Piece G from sheet 8. That's one long rectangle. And eight pieces marked H out of sheet 8. These are going to make my interior bookcases. If you want these, you need to cut out the shape that's in piece E. Once those are cut out, I'm going to clean them and then set that piece aside while I create the bookcases. Each bookcase is made of two pieces marked F and four pieces marked H. I'm going to add glue along the engraved lines on each piece marked F, and that tells me where I need to glue on each H piece. The lines work as a helpful guide so that I know that my shelves are straight once the bookcase is completed. You can, of course, change the different height of the shelves. This is just a helpful guideline. 
Once it's completed, this is what it looks like. I'm laying it down on my work mat so that I know I have all 90 degree angles once it's dried. You're going to construct two of these and these can be glued to the back of piece E. I'm laying down some Fabri-Tac glue on either side of the bookcase opening and this is going to be where I glue down my bookcase. Once each side is complete, when I hold up my wall that was marked E, I should be able to see the shelves through the opening. Before I move on, I'm going to take a bit of hot glue and add that on either side of the shelf where it's going to be hidden, but it will just help reinforce that wall. I'm also going to glue down piece G. There's not a super specific area where this needs to be. I'm lining it up underneath the notch at the top of the wall. This is just going to be a helpful support to make sure that your wall does not cave in when you glue it down. This is what the back of E looks like. And now we're going to flip it over to add two pieces marked I, which you can find in sheet two. These are just going to be some borders that go around the bookshelf to give it a little bit more detail. Again, this is a piece that you can replace with some wood or something a little bit more fancy, but this is how it looks once it's installed. And don't forget to add the chipboard covers if you want to cover up the corrugation. I'm going to be using this around the detail pieces, piece I that I just put on, and then also along the edges of the shelves so that the shelves look like solid pieces. This is how it looks once I add the chipboard pieces. Now I can move on to gluing this entire wall inside the room that we previously created. I always suggest dry fitting your pieces first so that you know everything is working correctly. This is how it should look from above. All those pieces, the bookshelf pieces and piece G, should be touching the back wall. To glue it in, I'm just going to angle it forward, add glue to the back of all of the bookshelf pieces and to the back of piece G, and then I'm going to push it in place. I'm laying it on its back and adding a little bit of weight to make sure that the glue takes a firm hold while it's drying. Now I'm going to be removing piece J, piece JA, and four pieces marked JB, all from sheet four. These are going to make your lower platform. I'm going to be gluing JA to the bottom front edge of J, and then I'm going to be adding JB to the sides to create the front and side of the platform supports. There's two extra pieces that I'm going to glue on the inside of the stage to add better support. This is what the bottom looks like, and when I flip it over, it makes a nice bottom step that's going to go underneath our fireplace. Before I glue it in place, I'm going to take some of my chipboard strips and I'm going to go around and cover up all of the cardboard corrugation that's showing. Now it's ready to go in place. First, I'm going to eyeball it to make sure that it is centered. Once I'm happy with its location between the two bookshelves, I can add glue and add weights. Now I'm going to remove piece K, piece KA, four pieces marked KB, all from sheet four. These go together in the exact same way as the previous one, and these make a smaller step that will go on top of the J step that we just glued in. Again, I am going to be eyeballing it to make sure that it is centered. You can also use a ruler. However, it is pretty easy to center these pieces between the bookcases. I'm going to glue that in place and then add some steps. This is going to create our platform for our fireplace. Now I'm going to be removing piece L, two pieces marked M, two pieces marked N, and one piece marked O, and you can find all of these in sheets four, mostly on sheet four, and then one M piece is on sheet eight. If you would like to have the fireplace, you need to cut out this piece at the very bottom of piece L. This will create the fireplace opening. I'm gonna turn it on its back, and I am going to place one piece marked N on either side of the fireplace opening. This is going to create the interior wall. Then I'm going to add piece O on top, which creates the ceiling of the fireplace. 
If you want to have some sort of chimney or flue that looks like it's open, you can cut a hole in piece O. Otherwise, it looks completely closed in like this. To create the sides of the fireplace wall, I'm going to glue pieces M on either side, lining up with the edges. These are going to be glued on the back of piece L. I'm using some weights to make sure that they glue at a 90 degree angle. This is how these pieces should look once they're all constructed together. This piece can now be installed inside the room. Again, it is going to be centered on top of the top tier, so on top of platform K. I'm adding glue to the bottom and the sides of piece M and the interior walls of the fireplace. I'm adding a few weights as the glue dries. The next few pieces are going to create the fireplace surround. I have six pieces marked P that are a pretty odd shape. I have one piece marked Q and two slightly larger pieces marked R. I'm going to be gluing three of the P pieces together to create one piece. These are going to be the columns that sit on either side of the fireplace opening. So in total, you should end up with two of these that are a triple thickness. I'm going to glue the two R pieces together and the Q piece is going to go on the bottom side lined up with one edge so that it creates a stair step effect. This is going to create the mantle for the fireplace. You may have noticed that the chipboard strips come in different thicknesses. There are three triple thick thicknesses that you will find on one of the sheets. These are specifically for covering these columns that go on either side of the fireplace. There's also a double thickness which will work on the top of the mantle and a single thickness which will work on the bottom. Make sure you're matching your thicknesses with how wide your corrugation is when it's showing. Now that those are covered, I can go ahead and install them on either side of the fireplace opening, making sure to line it up with the opening. Once the mantle supports or pieces P are glued in place, I can glue the mantle. This is going to be glued with the smaller side down on top of both of the pieces. Now I'm going to be removing four pieces marked S, which you can find on sheets five and nine. I'm also going to be pre-covering these with the chipboard strips because these are going to be the frames that go around the windows. This is another piece that is easily replaceable with wood or some other type of decorative item, but if you'd like to use what came with the kit, these are great frames for the windows, inside and out. If you would like to speed up covering the corrugation with the strips, I'm using a double thick one here because I didn't previously cover the interior piece and I'm just going to go around with a double thick chipboard strip to cover up the inside corrugation of the window. There are several ways you can do this, but um, it just depends on how fast you're working and what type of interiors you're working on as you go. I'm now removing eight pieces marked T. You will find all of these on sheet six. These are going to be glued together in doubles to create four columns that are a double thickness. I'm going to be covering the edges with a double thick chipboard strip and making sure not to put any chipboard on the inside of the gap. This gap at the top of the column is a specific width to have the beams that go above the ceiling. So if I put anything in there, they, it may not work later down the road. Each column needs to be glued in place, butting up against the window frame on either side. If you decide to make your own window frame, make sure you are conscious of this spacing as it helps with the ceiling beams later. I'm removing four pieces marked U, which you can find on sheets eight and nine. I'm gluing them together to create a double thickness. These are going to be our ceiling beams. After they've dried, I'm going to use a double thick chipboard piece to cover all my exposed edges on the bottom. I don't need to cover them on the top because the roof will cover that later on. These should fit down inside the column gaps that I mentioned earlier, and these will create the supports for the ceiling of the room box. I'm also making sure that these notches you see all along the top continue to line up. I'm putting in the second ceiling beam here and 
This is pretty easy to glue in. You just add glue to either side and pop it into the column. I highly suggest that you're happy with your interior work before you move on to the ceiling because it does get harder to work inside after this point. I'm now removing two pieces marked V from sheet 7. These are going to be glued together to make a double thickness. I'm covering some of the edges with some chipboard pieces. These are going to fit in the notches that go above the entire room box. This is creating the upper beam that's going to keep everything supported as we put the roof on. It does stick out the front just a little bit. At this point, I'm going to cover up any remaining corrugation that I see on the walls. I'm not worrying about the top because that will be covered with roofing. Speaking of the roof, I am going to need two pieces marked W on sheet 2 and 7 and two pieces marked X from sheets 2 and 3. The W pieces go towards the bottom of the roof or ceiling, they act as both, and then piece X makes up the top of the roof closer to the beam. If you would like skylights in your roof, you need to remove these pieces on the interior. They should line up with the beams so that the beams support the mullions in the window. You can alternatively switch X and W if you want your skylights closer to the window. I've cut out the centers and I covered the edges that are going to be exposed with chipboard before gluing it on because this is just going to be a little bit easier to do. I'm gluing it in place up against the V pieces or the beam that's at the top of the roof. Once those are in place, I can focus on piece W. Piece W is cut just a little bit long because everyone is going to have a slight variance in their construction. Put piece W up against piece X and check to see if piece W is laying flat against the beam. If it's not, you may need to shave off small amounts of the cardboard using a ruler and a sharp craft knife and then check it again. You want to continue to do this until your piece W sits flat against the top of the beam and that way you know that you have your roof completed and it looks correct and there's no gaps. I'm going to do this for both sides. Once I'm happy with the roof and I've glued it on, I'm going to cover up any gaps with some of my chipboard strips. I'm using the double thickness chipboard strips for this part. Now that my roof is glued on, I can take a single thickness chipboard strip and go along the front edge, just making sure that looks a little bit nicer by finishing it and covering that corrugation. I'm now going to use my acetate window sheet, the rectangular strip. I'm going to remove the paper from this, and this is going to be for my skylight windows. Again, you can replace this with something a little bit thicker if you like, but these do work pretty well. I'm going to glue it over the opening on top of piece X so that I have windows. Now I'm going to remove two pieces marked Y from sheet 9. These are going to create the upper part of your skylight window. I covered it ahead of time with the chipboard strips and I'm going to glue that on top so that it sandwiches my acetate sheet within it creating the window. This creates two skylights, one on each side of the roof. This will allow for a lot more natural light to get inside your room box and that way you can see a little bit more of what you've put into it. This is the completed 1 12th scale cardboard fireplace room. The mat board 1 24 scale goes together just the exact same way, but the pieces are smaller and you don't need the chipboard strips. Also remember once you're done and you don't need your templates anymore, they are recyclable. That's it for today's video on how to construct the 112 scale and the 124 scale. Remember, you can construct it the same exact way with the same exact pieces. You're just not going to use those chipboard strips on the edge and everything's just half the size. If you haven't purchased this kit yet, but you are interested after watching this video, I will put a link in the description box below and it will take you straight to my store. Happy creating. Bye.